Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's edition of the Short Form Obesity podcast. My name is Neus, and I'm going to be your host. It can be that some of you heard the webinar and podcast session we had some weeks ago with Tom Van Kineken. We talked at that time about the revolution of the mRNA technology in general and evaluated the suitability of the polymer prefix syringes for such use in detail. As announced by Tom at that time, we were running similar study programs with glass vials and as well with glass prefix syringes. So today we are talking about the glass prefix syringes and their application for mRNA. For that, I'm very glad to have with me Dr. Benjamin Heights. Benjamin is Senior Development Engineer in the Glass Syringes Department, a short farmer, and he will be sharing his knowledge and experience about Ceric glass syringes and their applicability for deep cold temperature applications, for example, mRNA vaccines. Hi, Benjamin. Nice to have you here. Hello, Noise. So my first question for you, Benjamin, especially for audience that hear this podcast for the first time. The COVID-19 pandemic has shown the great potential of mRNA vaccines. Can you briefly explain to the audience what are the main benefits and the potential drawbacks of mRNA vaccines when compared to, let's say, more traditional ones? Well, uh, let us start by clarifying the basic difference between the two types of vaccines. In mRNA vaccines, the mRNA is injected into the human body and serves as instruction for making a part of a virus. So if we take, for instance, the COVID-19 virus, this would be the T protein. While in traditional vaccines, weakened or inactive parts of the pathogen are prepared in a lab as stimulus for the immune response. So novel mRNA vaccines to not only bear the benefit of a short time to market as mRNA molecules are easier to produce and allow for flexible production plans, but they also ensure a higher biosafety as there is no need to produce any weakened virus. mRNA vaccines also generate a safer immune response as no virus is directly injected into the human body, but only genetic material that includes the viral protein. Now, in the case of traditional vaccines, the production of the weakened virus tends to be very slow and can be quite complex and requires dedicated production facilities, basically one production facility per type of virus. And working with viruses generally also comprises some biosafety hazard. Now, despite all this huge amount of benefits, mRNA vaccines present as well major challenges based on the notorious instability of mRNA, which requires it to be encapsulated, most commonly in lipid nanoparticles, that need to be stored in the deep cold temperature range. This generally complicates the whole supply chain and drug production processes, and adds some extra challenges to the primary packaging arising mainly from the cold storage temperatures, especially when you move from traditional multi dose vials to pre-filled syringes. Thanks, Benny. Yes, um, sounds uh, yeah, as a potential threat. So you just mentioned now the challenge uh, involved in shifting from multi-dose vials to preferred syringes due to this cold storage temperature supply chain. Can you elaborate a little bit more on this topic? What could be a potential drawback? Well, at SHOT, we have a proven vaccine track record of our glass syringe portfolio, which comprises a deep understanding as well as a large data package on the performance of our glass syringes when stored either at room or at fridge temperatures. Now, in order to ensure the stability of mRNA vaccines, extremely low storage temperatures are required, which might present a challenge for the primary packaging that initially has not been developed for such low temperature applications. We have to mention that it is and remains essential for a primary packaging to fulfill all its functionalities while at the same time ensure patient safety. Therefore, in the case of glass prefilled syringes, there are some questions that have to be answered. 
And here, the first question that might come directly to, to your mind is to know if it's even possible to maintain container closure integrity at the deep cold temperature range. As you might know, when going beyond the transition temperatures of rubber components, which depending on the rubber can be between minus 55 to minus 70 degrees Celsius, the rubbers lose their viscoelastic properties and thereby also their sealing properties. And this represents a real risk of container closure integrity failure. Then another point that we might certainly might ask ourselves is how the different syringe materials will react when stored at deep cold temperatures. Will the mechanical strength of the glass material be maintained after the freezing cycle? And what also about the mechanical performance of the dip closures? And also another question would be, what about the stability of the blinding properties? Will it still be possible to use the syringe after one or few free thaw cycles? And is there any significant, significant increase of subvisible particles to be expected as a consequence of the, the freezing cycle? And finally, another very crucial topic is also related to plunger movement. Imagine that you are taking a pre-filled syringe and you place it at an extremely low temperature. What exactly will happen? Well, the liquid freezes, expands, and consequently applies a quite significant force on the plunger stopper, which tends to move to find an equilibrium state, depending on parameters such as the filling volume, the filling media, as well as the headspace volume. And basically, this represents our next challenge, which is to ensure that the plunger displacement remains within the sterile area to keep a sterility of the filling and therefore ensure the patient's safety. So all these questions are, yeah, could be something that one could, could come up with and which is important to have clear answers in order to supply customers with the right primary packaging for mRNA applications. I see it's a whole new arena uh, related to the mRNA application and the conditions linked to that. So um, I would be very curious, interested to know more details about this last point you mentioned, the plunger movement. Um, could you provide some details? How shall we imagine this, this uh, let's say, very critical aspect is being tested? Uh, well, imagine that you have a syringe filled with your drug of interest and sealed with a defined plunger. Then we have a certain fill volume and head space that you will record. So before storing the syringe in the deep cold temperature, you will add a visual marker that will then leave a mark on the syringe body and allow retrospectively to assess the exact distance the plunger traveled during cold storage. This way, any displacement will be seen with bare eye when removing the syringe from cold storage. So what we did is that we repeated the experiment by varying the filling volume, the filling medium, the headspace volume, as well as the plunger stopper design in order to generate a robust data package, identify the most crucial parameters, and finally define the optimal set of parameters to minimize plunger movement. Thanks, Benjamin. Um, you've uh, provided us the key questions to know the suitability of the glass preface syringes. So can you provide us some experiences and some insights into the results of CIRIC glass syringes at these low temperatures? Were you able to overcome some or maybe all of these challenges? Well, despite what people could imagine, glass allows to even overcome all these challenges. Generally, Glass is seen as a brittle material, which is very fragile and tend to break. But to be honest, this is pure misconception. Would you think that glass pre-filled syringes will break at minus 50 degrees Celsius, be it under the effect of the expanding filling? Well, ceric glass syringes will make you rethink it. We conducted various studies assessing the barrel strength in a pre and post freezing condition, and we would not detect any degradation of ceric mechanical performance. And with our advanced sprayed-on silicon technology, the particle increase 
after freezing remains very low and the brachial spinal force is just minimally impacted by consecutive pre-thaw cycles. Now, coming back to the topic of plunger movement, as already mentioned earlier in this podcast, we conducted extensive testing using various syringe formats and plunger stoppers and vary varying different uh, power meters. So also to complete our study, we conducted transport simulations taking into account pressure drops that might occur during air freight transport. And out of those studies, we were able to conclude that with the right choice of power meters, it is possible to minimize plunger movement and guarantee sterility. And also the last point, which I would like to point out here is that despite the difference in thermal expansion coefficient between glass and rubber, which is in the range of, I would say two order of magnitudes, CCI was shown at minus 50 degree using CO2 head spice analyzing method from Lighthouse. Okay, so sounds for me, uh, uh, ceramic glass syringes were able to fulfill the tough conditions. Um, Benjamin, do you see any additional benefits uh, beyond this functional aspect? Well, <clears throat> I, would, I would start with the advantages of pre-filled syringes over currently used multi-dose vials. While pre-filled syringes essentially eliminate the processes that are required before you use a drug in a vial, they are much easier and much easier to use uh, for the practitioner as they help eliminating dosing errors as pre-filled syringes actually contain the exact dose. And once opened, we have also the problem that the shelf life of the vial is limited to a couple of hours. This means if the practitioner doesn't have enough patients for vaccination in, the, in this time slot, the remaining drug in the vial has to be discarded. And all in all, this allows cutting on waste and save money, which clearly motivates a shift towards single dose devices, such as pre-filled syringes. Next, talking in particular about glass pre-filled syringes, glass has been since ever a gold standard in pharma which bears many advantages over other materials. To cite few of them, glass is a non-reactive, highly resistant and oxygen impermeable material that can be easily sterilized. Moreover, the transition from multi-dose glass vials, which are commonly used for mRNA applications to pre-filled syringes, can be also very smooth since the material which is in contact with the drug stays the same and has a well-studied drug container traction behavior. Another point is that glass syringes have an established fill and finish network, which means that fill and finish companies have the required expertise to work with glass syringes. And yeah, well, last but not least, glass syringes have also a clear regulatory path allowing pharmaceutical companies to proceed with their common registration processes. So I invite the audience to watch the webinar session I had with Benjamin um, about this topic we're talking today. So this webinar is available on demand at world.shot.com. And there Benjamin provides further details and results from the testing program. So feel free to watch it. And a big thanks for you, Benjamin, for sharing uh, your knowledge, your expertise, for giving us the time. And I will be more than happy to have you here in the near future again. Yeah, well, thank you very much for having me here. <laughs> sure. Um, thanks to the audience for hearing this podcast. Also hope to see to hear you soon. Take care and bye-bye. <laughs>